All right, well, I want you to go ahead and turn your Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 19. Matthew chapter 6, beginning in uh, verse 19. Brother Keith just made an interesting statement uh, just a little while ago and uh, made a lot of good statements, but he said you might need a checkup from the heart up. Well, the title of my message this morning is, Where's Your Heart At? Amen. Where is your heart at? And so as we begin to think about that and understand, you know, all of this tying in together in the Sermon on the Mount, the teachings of Jesus, as we find right here, we're moving into a different section, but each one of these sections all fitting together, each one of these working with one another. Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 19, we're going to look at the first part of this, uh, talking about uh, our wealth, and then uh, this, this morning and the next week, we'll talk about the world worries and uh, not letting the worries of this world uh, weigh you down. And so as we look at it this morning in Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 uh, through 24, we find here the very first text of scripture in Matthew chapter 6 and verse uh, uh, 19. Uh, Jesus says this, he says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in. And so the very first thing that I want us to notice right here is right off from the very beginning, we find how this is very similar to what we've already talked about in Matthew chapter 6. And in Matthew chapter 6, beginning uh, in verse 1, Jesus was there teaching. I said this many times already throughout the past several weeks. Jesus said, uh, beware of practicing the right, uh, your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you might have no reward with your father who is in heaven and so with that in mind Jesus went on a series of do nots and so in verse 2 he says so when you give to the poor do not sound a trumpet before you in verse 5 when you pray you are not in other words do not be like the hypocrites and then in verse 16 Jesus says whenever you fast do not put on a gloomy face and of course we've already looked at all of those things but in that text of scripture we find all of these do not, right? I don't want you to do that. It is not what I want you to do. And so when we look at this next set of scripture that, that ties in directly with that, he says there again in verse 19, he says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on the earth. And so he starts off with this next set of do nots. He was talking about when you're giving to the poor, this is not what you're to do. When you're praying, this is not what you're to do. And when you're fasting, this is not what you're to do. And now he's talking about storing up treasures. And he begins by saying, do not store up for yourselves treasures here upon this earth. And so when we look at this, he says, you know, uh, in this uh, verse, he says, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal and so looking at that something that we need to understand when people stored up for themselves treasures up on the earth back then they don't really they didn't really do it in the way in which we do it today right so back then what they would do uh, their, their treasures would wouldn't be like what we have today we think of stocks and we think think of bonds and we think of bank accounts and we think of things like that as storing up our uh, treasures, our 401ks, and all of those things as storing up uh, our treasures. But back in the biblical day, uh, wealth was looked at very differently. In fact, uh, most of the wealth was regarded in light of precious metals like gold and silver and things like that, but also in livestock, but then also in the garments. In fact, we see mentioned many times purple garments. Uh, throughout scriptures we see fine linens talked about in scriptures when we get to heaven what's going to be put upon us is those fine linens and those fine linens were looked at as a treasure uh, upon the wealthy people if you saw somebody back in the day back in Jesus's day they were wearing purple they were probably of royalty right but they also had those who are wearing the fine linens and so in those fine linens uh, as people 
people were looking at those, they, they realized those were wealthy people, right? That those were people who had a lot of earthly wealth, and they were able to afford those fine linens. They didn't wear the everyday, uh, you know, probably hand-me-downs that everybody else had, but they had uh, the fine linens, and so therefore they were wealthy. And so one of the problems that they had, that they had to deal with back then, was how do they keep moths from destroying their fine linens, right? Uh, it's not so much that with our, uh, you know, uh, tightly enclosed houses that we have today. It's not so much a problem uh, that we face anymore, but not that long ago. You know, your, your uh, parents or maybe your grandparents, they had cedar robes. What was the pur purpose of those cedar robes? The purpose of those cedar robes was to help keep moths out, right? To keep those moths out. Just the smell of the cedar was supposed to keep the moths out. And then probably on the bottom of their cedar robes, they had moth balls that smelled really good, right? Can any of y'all, did I just put a memory in your nostrils right then when you, you smell those moth balls and you're like, oh my goodness, you know, when you, when you smell those things. And so they're trying to protect their investment, right? And so when you look at that, you have to worry. When you have that investment, you're trying to protect it. And that's what they, that's what Jesus was talking about when, you know, uh, rust or, or moths or even thieves come in uh, to destroy these things. You know, when we think about that, we still try to protect our investments today. We're worried about the economy today. We try to protect all of our investments today. And sometimes people get so called up and worrying about protecting their worldly things that, they, that they're, they're, they're not focused upon things that really matter. They get focused on those other things. And so when we look at this, we, we need to understand along with this, Jesus is giving them not just a list of do nots, but he's giving them a list of do's. Right? In the same way, as Jesus said, when you're, when you're giving to the poor, don't do this. When you're uh, praying, don't do this. When you're fasting, don't do this. In the same way, Jesus said, when you're giving to the poor, this is what you need to do. When you're praying, this is what you need to do. When you're fasting, this is what you need to do. And we spent several weeks looking at those things over the past few weeks. But when we look in verse 20 within this text of Scripture, Jesus said this. He said in verse 20, he said, but... Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. So Jesus said, don't store up for yourselves treasures within heaven where, uh, or within the earth, I'm sorry, where you know the, uh, the, the uh, moth's going to destroy, rust is going to destroy, thieves are going to break in and steal. You're constantly worried about those things, but rather store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where you don't have to worry about all of those things, right? That, that doesn't have to be something that keeps you up at night worrying and wondering. You know, we have cameras all around our house. And, every, and uh, those cameras all around our house, they have motion sensors on us, and it makes a little ding go off on our phone, and it wakes us up all throughout the night, and we're wondering, you know, what in the world is that ding that just went off? Most of the time during the day, it's usually a, a wasp or some kind of bug that flew in the, uh, through it, and then sometimes at night when it goes off, either a stray cat or a raccoon or whatever it is is walking across the back yard but but you know it keeps us up at night wondering what in the world is going on but when your investment is laid up in heaven you don't have to worry about all of those things right you've invested in the kingdom of god you have invested in the things that truly matter and you know when we begin to think about where your heart is you know most of us most of us the great majority of us have our heart placed in a position and directed towards things that just don't matter, right? I mean, they just don't matter. They, they have no eternal value. They have no earthly value whatsoever. We're not going to be able to bring those things to heaven with us. One of, those, one of these days, all of those things are going to decay. They're going to be gone. They're going to be no more. And they just don't matter, 
And so what we need to do is we need to lay up our treasures. We need to store our treasures with things that do matter. In fact, I'm reminded in the Word of God in Luke chapter 12, verse 13 through 14. Here it is as Jesus was out teaching and preaching. The Word of God says right here in Luke chapter 12, verse 13. It says, someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. They're calling out to Jesus. Jesus out there preaching on the kingdom of God, teaching on the kingdom of God. And here comes this one that just completely diverts and goes out into left field somewhere and says, Jesus, I know you're teaching on the kingdom of God, preaching on the kingdom of God, but tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. And so then Jesus turns around and he says this in verse 14. And he said to him, a man who appointed me judge or arbitrator over you. So what Jesus was basically saying, he was saying, that's not my focus. That's not what I'm here for. That's not what I'm here to be focused upon is the dividing of family inheritance and things like that, that you are completely missing the entire point of why I am here. Now, Israel had judges. They'd always had judges, right? Moses was a judge. And then we also find we've got a book of judges and we also find that. Uh, you know, King Solomon in his wisdom, he was a judge. And so they always had these judges that would help, you know, decide what's the best case for the family situation or whatever the issue was at hand. But Jesus said, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to prepare you for and to get you focused upon the things that matter. And the things that matter are the kingdom of God. Amen? The kingdom of heaven. That's what matters. That's what is important. Not the things of this earth. Not the things that are going to pass away one of these days. And then Jesus goes on in Luke chapter 12 and verse 15 right after that. The Bible says, And he said to them, Beware and be on guard against every form of greed. So what does this boil down to? It boils down to... It boils down to greed. So he says, be on guard for these. Be on guard for every form of greed, for, uh, for, for not even one has uh, an abundance uh, does his life consist of his possession. So even the one with, a, with the abundance, his life doesn't consist of his possessions. That's not the things that matter, right? Even if he has a great abundance, those, those are not the things that are important, all the treasures of this earth, he goes on in verse 16, and he, sa- and he says, and he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man was very productive. Then as he began re- uh, reasoning to himself, saying, what shall I do since I have no place to store up my crops? Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down the barns and build larger ones, and there, w- there I will store up my grain and my goods, and I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for you for years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. God said to him, you fool, this is the very night your soul is required of you, and now who will own what you have to prepare? So is that man who stores up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God? So as we look at that text of Scripture, he he has a great abundance in his harvest. And so rather than sharing it with people, rather being a blessing to other people, what does he do? He goes and builds a bigger barn and he stores it up for himself. And he says, now I'm set up. And what does God say to him? God says, you're a fool. Right? You're a fool. You're a fool for thinking you are now set up because this very night, Your soul is required of you. Now all of those things that you thought were your treasures are no longer yours. There's somebody else's problem to deal with now. Amen? So you're a fool in thinking about uh, thinking the way in which you are. And so again, there it is that Jesus is contrasting the the things of this world with the things of heaven and realizing that our heart, our focus, needs to be on the things of heaven rather than the things of this earth. And so 
When we think about this and we say, well, Jesus said, you know, not to store up treasures on earth, but to store up treasures in heaven. You know, what is Jesus talking about? Obviously, he's talking about material things right here where, where uh, rust can destroy and moth can destroy and, st- and uh, thieves can come in and steal. Obviously, that's what he's talking about. But when we think about those heavenly things and we think about those heavenly treasures, you know, is Jesus limiting? limiting us here to just material things just physical things so well I don't have any financial money certainly we can uh, you know store up our finances in heaven we can you know we, we're, we're required to tithe to the church but we could give beyond that we can give above and beyond the tithe we could give towards uh, ministries and, and uh, you know be a blessing to those ministries we take up for food pantry every month or maybe there's other ministries that you give to and maybe there are missionaries that you support we have brother Doug and sister Diane who are there in the Philippines we as a church give to them maybe you give to them as well and we have a student over there that we're supporting we have pregnancy support center that we support maybe you can give to the Gideons I mean there's a whole host of different ways that you can give financially there's endless ways of which you can give financially but is jesus here limiting us to the financial things to the financial realm to the materialistic realm of things as we give materialistically to this i like what craig bloomberg wrote in his commentary the new american commentary on the book of matthew this is what he said and i wrote it down here he says spiritual treasures should be defined as broadly as possible don't limit them to just financial things. You might say, well, I don't have any money to give, right? So don't limit those to just the financial things. I think we should be good spiritual stewards in our finances as well. Don't get me wrong. And I think that he would agree with that as well. But he says spiritual treasure should not be de- uh, should, should be defined as broadly as possible as everything that the believer can take with them beyond the grave. Everything the believer can take with them beyond the grave. He's saying holiness of character, obedience to all of God's commands, souls won for Christ and disciples matured in faith. All of those things are things that we can take with us, treasures that we can take with us beyond the grave. Amen. Brother Keith was talking about that a little while ago. Something as simple as just sitting down with a child and letting them recite a memory verse verse to you, knowing that those are spiritual treasures that are laid up for us in heaven. Amen. And that's not why we do it. So we can get just, just get to heaven one day and say, hey, look at all of the treasures that I have, but we're investing in the souls and the lives of those individuals. And so as we do that, we recognize that in so doing, we are laying up treasures in heaven. Ultimately, it's all going to be laid down at the feet of Jesus because only Jesus is worthy but when we think about that Jesus said okay where where, uh, rust can destroy and moth can destroy and where thieves can come in and steal and so we think about those treasures that are in heaven and we think well in heaven you know probably not going to be any moths up there destroying any of her clothing probably not going to be any rust over there but can the thief come and steal away from us our heavenly treasures because you know Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 10 Jesus says the thief comes only to steal to kill and destroy and so as we look at that Jesus finished that verse he said but I have come to give him life and give it to them abundantly but the thief who's the thief the thief is Satan and so when we recognize the thief is being Satan I want you to understand not even Satan can steal those treasures out from under us amen not even Satan is able to get upon those heavenly treasures and steal those heavenly treasures as we look at that and understand I I love the book of Acts and within the book of Acts you find in the book of Acts there Peter and John were they were out there preaching the gospel and as they was out there preaching the gospel they were arrested for preaching the gospel 
gospel. They were brought before the court for preaching the gospel. And they told them, you better not preach the gospel anymore. And as a Rusty Coon self-paraphrased translation of this, we can't help it, right? If you think it's wrong for us to preach the gospel, that's too bad. We know it's right because God told us to do it. And that's what we're going to do. And so what did they do? They were released and they went right back out and they began preaching the gospel again. They were arrested a second time. This time, not only were they arrested, they said, we told you to stop preaching the gospel. They said, well, we told you we weren't going to stop preaching the gospel. So we're going to continue to preach the gospel and tell people about Jesus. But then the Bible says they were flogged. They were beaten. And listen, this wasn't any little taps on the back. They were beaten severely. They were beaten harshly very cruelly that the word of God tells us something absolutely phenomenal, mind-blowing, really in Acts chapter 5 and verse 41. The word of God says this, and so they went on their way from the presence of the council. Not, remember, they just got beaten, right? They went on away from the presence of the council rejoicing that they had been considered worthy to suffer shame for his name. Isn't that a phenomenal thing right there when you begin to think about that they were beaten and they rejoiced over it saying that we were found worthy, worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. You know what they were doing? They were laying up treasures in heaven, right? They, they knew the potential of being arrested. They knew the potential of having harm to uh, harm come to them. They knew they could even be killed, and guess what? They eventually were killed in the name of Jesus, but they considered a great joy, a great honor to be able to suffer for the name of Jesus. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 uh, and 11? Jesus said this in the Beatitudes. We looked at uh, several weeks ago, several months ago, actually now, we, we look at the words of Jesus, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, says, Blessed are those who persecute you for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and say all kinds of falsely things uh, against you, all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. They rejoiced and were glad, right? For your reward in heaven is great. If we're in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Rejoice and be glad. Why? Your reward is great. You have stored up for yourself treasures who are in heaven. Now, that's not why they did it. They did it to glorify Jesus. They did it to honor Jesus. They preached the gospel because they wanted to see people saved. They wanted to see souls saved. They didn't do it for the purpose of, uh, the, the, for the purpose of uh, uh, laying up those treasures in heaven, but they had forsaken the safety and security and tranquility of going with the flow and they willingly put themselves in harm's way to do the very thing God asked them to do. And here we are. I, I believe, I know we're in a mess as a nation right now. I know that things are tough, getting harder and harder to pay that grocery bill. Amen. But we are still the most blessed nation on the face of this earth. Amen. We are still the most blessed nation on the face of this earth. We live in South Mississippi. Mississippi's not just in the Bible Belt, it's the buckle of the Bible Belt, amen? And if you can't live the Christian life in Mississippi, you probably can't live it anywhere. So it's not difficult for us to live out the Christian faith in Mississippi, amen? The reality is we need to put Jesus first in every area of our life. You see, I don't I think Jesus is just limiting us to financial things, just as the commentator said. I don't think he's just limiting us to financial things when it comes to those spiritual 
blessings, those treasures that we lay up in heaven, anything that we could take beyond the grave with us. See, I don't, also don't think that he's limiting us to the things on this earth that we do right now, that we lay up those treasures on the earth right now, today, to materialistic things either. Now, don't get me wrong, materialistic things are very distracting. Very distracting. Amen? But there's all kinds of things that we could do to get distracted. And so when we look at this next set of scripture right here, this next text, sometimes people pull this out by itself and they separate it from the rest of what Jesus is saying. But I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt what Jesus is saying right here in verses 22 and 23 go hand in hand with the whole of what Jesus is saying. Verse 22, Jesus says, The eye is the lamp of the body, so then if the eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Then the light that is in you is darkness. How great is the darkness. Talking about if your eye becomes dim, then your whole body is to become dim. Now why do I believe that this goes hand in hand with what Jesus is talking about right here? Because in verse 21, he says, For you, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Then in verse 24, Jesus says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So sandwiched right in between those two comments about where is your heart and you can't serve God and wealth at the same time is the warning of Jesus of being aware of the condition of your eye. If the eye is dim, the whole body is dim. If the eye is letting in the light, then the whole body is going to be filled with light. You see, as Jesus said there in verse 21, He says, For wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. See, the heart is the final resting plate of whatever... That is, that's in there. It's the final stop. It's the final place. Right? But the eye is the entrance point. Amen? It's where it comes in at. And if you're letting in darkness, darkness is going to settle into your heart. But if you're letting in light, then light is going to fill your heart. And if your eye is constantly chasing after the things of this world, then your heart is going to be filled with the things of this world. If your eye is constantly searching after wealth, then your heart is going to be filled with the desire of constantly searching after wealth. If your eye is constantly searching after looking towards lusts of anything, then your heart is going to be filled with whatever the lusts of whatever it is that your eye is searching for. That's why the Word of God tells us to keep our eyes focused upon Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Amen? That's why the Word of God tells us to keep focused on the things above and not on the things below. Well, the things below can get us distracted real quick, can't they? And we're looking at the things below and we let them in through the eye, we let them in through the senses, and then all of a sudden we're, they fill our heart, and then all of a sudden that's where our passion is. And if that's where our passion is, that's where our hands are going to go, and that's where our feet are going to follow. That's what we're going to pursue after in every bit of our being. Amen? So if your eye is looking towards the things of this world, your feet and everything else is going to pursue the things of this world. But if your eye is focused upon the things of God, then your feet and everything else are going to soon follow after. 
Why? Because that is where your heart's telling them to go. Amen? That's where your heart's telling them to go. Because that's where it's all settled. It's all settled right there within the heart. And whatever's in your heart, that's what's going to give direction to your feet. That's what's going to give direction to your hands. That's what's going to give direction to every part of you, including this. Amen? Including your time, including your talents, including your treasures, all of those things are going to be pursuing whatever has settled within your heart. That's why praying is so important. That's why spending time in the Word of God is so important. That's why doing ministry is so important. We want to give you an op opportunities, and we give you opportunities to do ministry. And the more you do ministry, the more you realize, you know what, I'm not really the one that is dishing out the blessings. I'm getting blessed. Amen? I'm the one getting blessed as a result of that. But it has to settle in the heart. So where's your heart today? Well, the good litmus test that Jesus gave right here, verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So maybe a better question than asking where your heart is, where's your treasure? What are you pursuing? What are you chasing after? What consumes your time? What consumes your thoughts? What sets forth your daily direction? Is it the kingdom of heaven? are the things of this earth. It might not even necessarily be bad things. But there's things that are distracting you. From laying up your treasures that are in heaven. That are temporary. That one day will not matter not even the slightest the man that built the bigger barn he might have ended up being the most wealthy man in all of the region with the biggest barn in all of the region but the next day it didn't do him any good because he was dead amen now listen Jesus is not saying that we should all become monks and live off the land and go and live in a commune somewhere. The Bible tells us to work. Bible tells us to work by the sweat of our brow. Amen. Bible says that if a man doesn't provide for his own household, he is worse than an infidel. So Jesus is not at all saying don't work. <laughs> Jesus is saying, pay attention to what motivates that work. We ought to provide for our homes, our families. Amen? Worse than an infidel if you don't. The Word of God. That ought to be a part of our heart. We've got to work to do that. We also can't let those worldly things distract us from the heavenly things. 
Well, I've provided for my family. But I want a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. You know what happens when you keep chasing after that little bit more? You will never be satisfied. Ever. You will never be satisfied. But when you start investing in the kingdom of heaven, not only will you be satisfied, you're going to be blessed. Amen? Right here, right now, today. Right now, during this time of invitation, Brother Keith comes forward. Ask yourself the serious question, where is your heart? Can't figure out where your heart is? Then ask yourself, well, what do your feet run into? What does your mind keep drifting towards? What do your hands keep reaching for? Because that's where your heart is. Maybe you need to do some repenting today. It doesn't have to be public. can be if you want it to. But it doesn't have to. You just get that alone time with God and say, God, I've been chasing after all the wrong things. I know that I know you. I know that I'm saved. Born again, bought with the blood of Jesus, but my priorities have not been what they ought to be. They ought to be focused on you and your kingdom. So as you stand this morning and as God's stirring with your heart, do you know that you're saved? Do you know that you're a child of God? Do you honestly know that you're heaven bound, bought with the blood of Jesus Christ? Well, Brother Rusty, how can I know that? If you were to die right now, where would you spend eternity? How can I know that? Well, answer me this. What makes you think you're going to heaven? Well, I'm a good person. I tithe, I've been baptized before, I've done all that stuff. Well, all of those are the wrong answers. The only right answer is that I put my faith in Jesus. Amen? I put my faith in Jesus. I asked him by faith to forgive me of my sins, and by faith I know he paid for those sins, and by faith I know he's forgiven me of those sins. By faith, I have invited him into my life to be my Lord and to be my Savior. And by faith, I believe he did. As a result, as Brother Keith was talking about earlier, he started a transformation process within my life. Something that he's done. Is that you today? If not, would you come today? By faith. Ask Jesus into your life to save you from your sin before it's everlasting too late. You can have that opportunity right now. You come. This altar's open for you. I'm here for you. You come as God so leads.